bees as pollinators are part of you know an entire subset of the living creation that helps plants to reproduce uh, the reality is many of our foods more than half of the foods we eat are pollinated by animals and almost all of our natural habitat uh, reproduces by virtue of pollination um, this is usually sort of an un in the magnitude and the importance of pollination usually sort of go undiscussed when you talk about just the mechanisms of pollination in science class. And typically, uh, everyone's negative association with bee stings or even positive associations with honey tend to overwhelm the bigger picture, which is that bees are a pollinator. And without pollinators, we don't live. You know, we teach about this with the honeybee, and I think that it's important to note that. You know, if our honeybees do go extinct, which is something that I think we're threatened with today, we lose honey. But the important thing is to be teaching about honeybees as pollinators, and if our pollinators go extinct, so do our ecosystems, and we are very much parts of those. And so, you know, the, the fate of humanity and our health is very much linked to the, the health of our pollinators, and we need this lesson to come across at a very early age. It seems odd, but none of the organic farms that I worked on, one, one had a couple of hives, um, but there was no interaction between the farm staff and the bees, right? Which, you know, looking back, in re you know, in retrospect, it's very odd, right? Because the bee and the farmer should really be very good friends, you know, because they, they're, they were both mutually benefiting each other. Um, so an organic farm without bees would be very odd. Right, so for for me, the fact that I get to work bees now, and I also am the farm manager at the Shalom Institute, it's sort of a no it's sort of a no brainer. You know, you can't do one mutually exclusive from the other. So, yeah, the recommendation would be for anybody who likes to eat, who likes to grow food, you should really find a way to cultivate some sort of relationship with some bees close to you whether you have one hive in a backyard or you work on a farm with 20 hives, you know. Um, it's an important relationship and probably more important possibly than it's ever been because of the state of the environment and the condition of bees. You know, the more people who can understand bees need, you know, pesticide-free homes and miles around them, um, if possible, to be pesticide-free, if little changes can happen where there's more people involved with bees who understand bees as not a negative force in the world that can just hurt you, but as an incredibly positive force that can create an amazing amount of abundance for everybody. That's the way to view the bees and why to connect with them. So we sort of use a variety of educational techniques, uh, one of which has been actually taking groups of kids up to the hives to sort of have that moment, that wow moment. Uh, beholding the inside of a hive and sort of seeing how it all works. Another thing is we've been sort of bringing education down into camp. We have an observation hive where kids can look without having to fully suit up. Um, and we have an educational tool down there. But mostly uh, every group that's come up this session has been part of our pollinator program, uh, which is sort of a dynamic, outdoor educational, interactive way of learning about, you know, the jobs of bees in the hive, um, how foraging bees actually find their flowers um, and then most importantly sort of talking about the importance of the restoration of pollinator habitat. All of these are sort of taught through games uh, because everyone comes through the garden and it's one of our main educational programs sort of teaching about the plight of pollinators and how you know the bees that we teach about and that we love here are just sort of one part of the bigger picture with all of the pollinators in the, in the region. Um, you know, why is it important to teach the youth about, about the things that kind of keep our planet going? You know, they are our future. Um, I think people have a lot of fear, um, around bees and a lot of misunderstandings. And, um, when we bring kids to an apiary, to a bee yard, when we teach them about bees, um, in, uh, in my program's Bee Hugger Classroom, or Land of Milk and Honey, and the programs we've developed here at the Shalom Institute, 
pollinator education programs, we actually are having the kids act out what the bees do inside a hive. And when they do that, they get really excited and they start to understand how the plants and the trees depend on the, the bees and that the bees depend on the plants and that it's a, an interdependent symbiotic relationship. And they have a lot of fun with it, but they also take critical messages about the importance of maintaining habitat, restoring habitat, limiting um, the presence of poisons in our environment that can hurt both plants and animals, pollinators, and people. And truly, there is never a dull moment um, from trying to manage swarms to, you know, adding supers at the right time, to when do we pull honey, to, oh, there's varroa mites, that, how do we treat that? Um, that? Like, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's really rewarding work because, one, it helps everything we grow on the property. That symbiotic relationship between what's growing naturally and what I'm planting, we need the bees, so the fact we have, you know, 10, now 11 hives, really helps us um, in our full production of what we do on the farm. So our pollinators are certainly uh, in peril at the moment, but I think it's just as easy to teach about you know, the causes of this, largely urbanization, the, the spreading out of humans into natural landscapes and sort of replacing all of these delicate and beautiful ecosystems with concrete and grass. Uh, but it is just as easy to teach about you know, the reversal of that product and remind everybody that the flowers that we're getting rid of are food and habitat for our pollinators. And it's just as easy for kids to get their hands dirty and put those things back in the earth. Neither the pollinators nor we will survive very happily or survive at all without one another. And so you know, we need to make sure that moving into a brighter tomorrow, a healthier tomorrow, a more beautiful tomorrow, we do so together.